Hello, my name is Gabriella Lozzi, and this video is going over Physics 2211 for Georgia Tech, Lab 1, that examines constant velocity on a rolling object. For my experiment, I chose to use a tennis ball. To begin, we have the table of contents. We're starting by talking about the important ideas in regards to constant velocity, the assumptions we have to make for this lab, the video I chose to use, the tracker analysis of that video, the code to predict the position relative to time, and the graphs of the predicted versus the observed position of the ball at certain times. As I said before, we will begin with the important ideas related to the lab. This starts with Newton's first law that states that every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless an outside force acts on it. This means in order for constant velocity, we need zero net force as no outside forces can be acting on the system for there to be constant velocity. Continuing, we also use Newton's second law and formulas derived from this law in order to help predict velocity and positions within this lab as a function of position versus time. More specifically, as I have in my PowerPoint, we will use the position update and the velocity update formula within the lab, especially within the code. Continuing, we are talking about the assumptions that need to be made for this lab. Specifically, as I said, that net force has to be zero. We must assume that there's no forces acting on the ball. This includes air resistance, friction, that gravity has no effect, and also that the ball is perfectly round, so that has no effect. In essence, as I stated before, this means that the net force will be zero. In the end, we will see that this is impossible in real life as the predicted and observed graphs are not the same. Continuing, this is a video that I used for the lab experiment. The ball, which is the system, is rolling across the table. In this occasion, the surroundings would be the table and the air, although we are assuming for constant velocity that they have no effect. Gravity would also be part of the surroundings. Next, we see the video in Tracker. Here I made the beginning position of the ball, the axis, and tracked the middle part of the ball as it moved for approximately 1.14 seconds in increments of 0 0.03 seconds. Afterwards, I entered some information into the base code. I started by changing the weight of the ball, although it won't have any effect. I used the online average of a tennis ball for this. Then I divided the final position by the final time to get my velocity. I then entered this into the code for the velocity. Next, I made sure that time was less than 1.14 as that was the max of my video and continued to change the ball velocity and ball position to follow the velocity update and the position update formula. Additionally, I also updated delta t to be 0 0.03 seconds as those are the increments of my video. This is the information that I got from the code. I then put the observed and the predicted data into the charts, and this is what I got. It's clear that the observed data is not the same as the predicted data, although they have similar beginning and end points. After this, I changed the x from positive to negative to see what would happen, and I saw that the slope changed from positive to negative. The real question is whether or not the net force is zero, and it's not, as we can see that the graphs do not match up. This could be for many reasons. The tennis ball is not completely round, the frame rate of the video isn't perfect, or the tracking, but most importantly, air resistance does exist, and so does gravity and friction, which affects the ball and makes it not move at a constant velocity.